Tatum Hall as Louisville plays its final game at the historic arena with plenty at stake. Potentially a spot in the NCAA tournament on the line as the Cardinals take on number one Syracuse, which is undefeated on the road this season and is looking to spoil the party. Louisville legends are on hand to see if the old building's got one more magic moment left. Can the Cards offend the nation's top-ranked team? We'll find out next. The Louisville Cardinals take the floor at Freedom Hall for the final time. A record crowd expected. They've sold out every game here during the Rick Pitino era, and they packed it again to see the nation's number one team, Syracuse, atop the polls for the first time in the regular season in 20 years. ESPN College Basketball presented by Five Hour Energy. Syracuse playing perhaps for the number one overall seed in the NCAA tournament, something Louisville earned last year. This year, the Cardinals will be happy just to get in the big dance. Louisville at 10 and 7 in Big East play, losing two of the last three. Syracuse 15 and 2 in one of those losses at home to Louisville. Hi, everybody, with Fran Fraschilla. I'm Dave Pash. Holly Rowe will be alongside shortly. Fran, hard not to get caught up in the emotion, especially when on the Jumbotron before the game, they're playing highlights from the 1980 and 86 National Championship teams. You're right, Dave. Not only great Louisville Cardinal memories, but we're going to leave behind a great slice of college basketball history today. Six degrees of basketball separation. I can't wait to chronicle with you. But more importantly, Louisville Cardinals need this win. Yeah, huge game for them to try to get into the NCAA tournament for Syracuse seeking that number one overall seed. Well, you're right. Louisville's already knocked off Syracuse. That'll give them a little bit of confidence. You want to go into the Big East tournament on a roll. And right now, Rick Pitino told us he thought 11 wins would do it. 10 would be a little bit uh, sketchy. So this is this is an important game. They've got a very good strength of schedule. And the Cardinals 10-7 uh, and 7 in Big East play. Edgar Sosa's had a really good year for them. He's featured in our Star Watch along with Syracuse's Andy Routon. Andy Routon's, I'm telling you, you could get... He's going to get serious consideration for Big East Player of the Year. Edgar Sosa, the senior from the Bronx, New York. Very, very solid for Rick Pitino. He's grown up and matured. And Brand, the same starting five for almost the entire year for Syracuse. Joining around his freshman, Brandon Trish. Rick Jackson reigning Big East Player of the Week along with Wes Johnson and Ottawaku. It is senior day. Here at Louisville, so final home game for Sosa, Smith, and Delk. Jennings and Samuels, the other starters for Louisville. For more on the great history and tradition of Freedom Hall, we welcome in the third member of our crew, Holly Rowe. Guys, it is electric in this building right now. And for so many people in Louisville, their childhood memories are wrapped up here in Freedom Hall. It opened in 1956, and it's not just been basketball. Elvis Presley performed here. The Beach Boys gave their first concert. Final fours have been played here and world championship tour shows. But more important today, so many All-Americans and former greats for Louisville are here to close out this building for the Cardinals. I just saw Jerry Smith go over and motion to those guys as if to say, we will represent you here in our final appearance, but they'll have to do it against the toughest team in the country, Syracuse. And Holly, going to be very interesting to see how Louisville manages the emotions here today because they're a team throughout the year that has kind of struggled with that. Freedom Hall named in honor of war veterans by a high school student. Charlotte Owens was 17 years of age when she won the naming contest. She lost her father in battle. It's one of the reasons why she wanted to name it Freedom Hall. The first game didn't actually involve Louisville here. It was Western Kentucky and San Francisco back in December of 1956. And Louisville today playing its 823rd game here at Freedom Hall. Wes Unsell holds the arena record for most points in a game. Six final fours have been played here. That's third all-time municipal auditorium in Kansas City, number one, Madison Square Garden, number two. And it's a beautiful day here in Louisville. They're still filing in. Record crowd expected for Louisville and number one, Syracuse. Louisville trying to get its 20th win. There have been only three Big East teams in 
the last 27 years to win 20 games and not make the NCAA tournament. Ironically, Syracuse was one of them back in 2007. Not going to happen this year. They're in. They might be the number one overall seed. And they've got an undefeated road record. The last team to make it through the entire Big East campaign unbeaten was UConn. They went on to win the national title in 1999. Benny Crum, who led Louisville to a pair of national titles. Long-time head coach here. Still comes to just about every game. And a lot of those two teams at halftime of this afternoon's contest. Syracuse with only one win ever at Freedom Hall. And it was Jim Beheim's first against a ranked team. Rick Pitino was the lone assistant for Jim Beheim who made that trip. That's part of that six degrees of basketball separation that we'll be talking about all game long. Louisville will start with it. John Cal, Michael Stevens, Jeff Clark, our officials. Well, Syracuse has not played a possession of man-to-man -man all season, but Louisville sees a steady diet of that zone every day in practice. Let's see how they move that ball. Samuels. In the high post, finds Sosa. That's where Louisville did a lot of its damage in the first meeting, but Sosa misfiring. Here's Trish down court, swatted away by Jerry Smith. Couldn't save it, it'll stay Syracuse ball. Now remember, Rick Pitino told us the key to being successful against Syracuse is keeping them out of transition. And that time, an opportunity for Trish to go all the way, but the senior from Wauwatosa, Wisconsin, the outstanding play. Rick Jackson among the league and nation's leaders in field goal percentage short with his first attempt. Here's another corner three, this one by Dell, and Louisville 0 for 2. Well, they're getting what they want because they want to work the ball through the mid post, Dave, and back out to the three point line. On the other hand, Syracuse defends that three point line so well. Louisville was 9 of 30 from three point land in the first meeting. Syracuse allows the second most three-point attempts in the nation in part because of that zone as Jackson gets the rebound Louisville now 0 for 3. Very small thing but Andy Routon did a great job of challenging that jump shot. This is a longer Syracuse zone than the one that Jim Bayon put on the floor a year ago. Here's Routon's a long three. Not there. Still looking for our first point. 90 seconds in. Routens has been outstanding his last two road games. From three-point land, misfiring in his first shot. Samuels, no, and Routens the rebound. Although Louisville's come up empty, they've, they've gotten the ball where they want to get it. The key is you can have a great attack, but you have to make shots against Syracuse. Anawako finds a cutting Trish. They had a foul before the shot on Jerry Smith. Jim Beheim, number two among active coaches behind Mike Krzyzewski in wins. He was an assistant coach on that Final Four team in 1975 for Syracuse that uh, met up with Louisville in the consolation game. Roy Danforth was the head coach as Jackson drives, and he's 0 for 2. Syracuse shot a season low, 41%, and the loss to Louisville at the Dome. Here's Sosa on the drive. And Trish comes away with it. Patino said they'd like to run more now that they're at home. They tried to control the tempo up at the carrier zone. Jackson got the rebound. He misses. And Smith corrals. Two and a half gone by. Nothing yet for either team. We wondered how Louisville will handle the emotions and also Syracuse handling this crowd as well. It's rare they play in front of this kind of crowd that is rooting against them. 20,000 today. They played in front of 34,000, the most ever on campus, uh, just a little over a week ago against a. Or it was a week ago. He's going over. Smith hits a three for the first basket. If you make basket, it allows you to set up your pressure, and it's a token press. Now that time, Dave, Syracuse is going to start their offense with 24 on the shot clock, so it melted some clock in the backboard. Louisville one for six, Syracuse now one for seven as Johnson gets the basket and a great pass inside. Rick Jackson, a very, very underrated passer. He's had games this year. Providence, he had seven assists. 
Very cerebral for a, what I'd call an offensive lineman. And Johnson, 15th in the Big East in scoring. He's the only Syracuse player in the top 30 in the league in points per game. Very unselfish basketball team. Second three for Jerry Smith. He struggled from out there this year, but one of the best three-point shooters in the history of Louisville basketball. All three of his shots have been contested, but he's gotten pretty good looks. And Johnson fouled on the way up. He'll shoot two. Second team foul on the Cardinals. Take a look now. This is a good challenge by Routens, but it doesn't upset the rhythm of Jerry Smith's jump shot. That's been a key all year. You mentioned the prolific shooting first three years. Rick, Rick Patino felt that he's taking too many challenge shots. But sometimes there's a different stage between a challenge shot and a semi-challenge shot. That doesn't disrupt your rhythm. They got Sosa for the foul, and Wes Johnson gets the first free throw. We talked with Rick Pitino before the game and asked him, do you say anything to your team? He said, you know, they know it's the last game here at Freedom Hall. I I'm just focused and telling them, hey, we we've beaten this team. They're the number one team in the country. Let's do what we did last time and get ourselves into the big dance. Well, you've heard, you're right. You've heard me say, just start a one-game winning streak, and that's all you want to do today. Just focus on the team in orange and what you have to do in terms of execution to attack them on both ends of the floor. Johnson has all four of Syracuse's points. Smith with all six for Louisville. Sosa with the extra pass. Swap shy from the corner. And rebound by Onowaku. That's a good job by Louisville getting back, building their defense. We want to keep Syracuse out of transition. Here's Johnson with penetration. Beautiful move in the lane. And another Louisville foul, the third on the Cardinals. And they'll get Samuels for his first. Louisville by two early. Many Louisville legends on hand for the final game at Freedom Hall. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by 5-Hour Energy. Hours of energy now, no crash later. For more information, visit 5-HourEnergy.com. It always pays to double check. Get State Farm's free discount double check to make sure you're saving all you can on car insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Are you ready? I'm ready. John, your car is here. Go get him, Tiger. When you're hitting the road for business, good luck. Enterprise will pick you up and get you on the road to success. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. I was getting depressed because of all the stress I was feeling at home. Had a poor credit score and the number would haunt me wherever I go. But I moved to a place where my credit could stink and nobody would care. I just wish that somebody had told me that place was a renaissance fair. FreeCreditReport.com Tell your friends, tell your dad, tell your mom Never mind them and singing our songs Since we first showed up with our pirate hats on If you're not into fake sword fights Pointy slippers and green wool tights take Free credit score report with enrollment and triple advantage This is not the free credit report provided for by federal law Free hot breakfast Real value from your friends at Hampton. Do you guys know there's over 200 combinations of Ultimate Trios? That means that we could come in once a week for four years and never choose the same thing twice. Applebee's Ultimate Trios. Over 200 combinations. You pick three for one low price. Another reason why there's no place like the neighborhood. First and second round coverage of the Masters. April 8th and 9th on ESPN. They will continue to have basketball games and other events here at Freedom Hall, but today, unless Louisville makes the NIT, is the final men's basketball game. There have been some great moments throughout the history of Freedom Hall. Wes Unself with 45 points. That's the Freedom Hall record for most in a game back in 1967. Milt Wagner had uh, some terrific games helping Louisville win a national title. That was an 83, beating Memphis State. Samaki Walker at Louisville's first triple-double back in 95. And then Edgar Sosa in 2009 hit the three-point shot, which uh, has been deemed the shot heard around the Commonwealth of Kentucky. That three to beat the Wildcats. Oh, 
Never nervous Purvis as a freshman led Louisville to that 86 championship beating Jay Billis's Duke Blue Devils. They were playing the highlights of that before the game as Wes Johnson misses the first free throw. And let's check in with Holly Rowe for more on Wes Johnson. Well, Wes Johnson has been battling through an injury to his right shooting hand that he got against Connecticut. If you were to put your palm, your hand out in front of him, you see that L of your thumb and your index finger. That whole area was discolored and swollen. Even now, if you look at the knuckle where his thumb meets his palm, it's incredibly swollen. I talked to him before the game. He said it hurts, but he doesn't want to tape it. It's just something he's going to have to fight through. But Brad Pike and their great athletic training staff has been doing massage, ice, everything they could, electrical stimulation to get that swelling down and relieve him of some of that pain. And as Mara misses a three, Sosa with another opportunity off the mark. Johnson in the first meeting frame was just 5 of 20 from the field in that loss at home to Louisville. And in large part because they saw a, a heavy diet of zone defense. You'll see Louisville today opening and playing some man, but they'll play an awful lot of zone as well. Ottawaco inside gets it to drop. He's shooting almost 70% from the field on the year. Amazing to me, 65% for his career as well. I love this Syracuse team. Guys like Onowaka were not heavily recruited. This guy, Dave, he goes about 270. Look at the girth and look how he backs down Samardo Samuels. And Samardo's got to be careful today because of foul trouble. Smith, who's already hit a couple, can't knock down that one. Louisville taking a lot of threes. Nine of their 11 attempts have been from behind the arc as Johnson misses a two. Right around the hoop, and here comes Sosa in transition, and they're going to get Routens for a foul. That's the first on Syracuse. There's no question. Since the injury to Wes Johnson, you know, he has not been the same player shooting the basketball. We'll see if that has an impact on Syracuse in the NCAA tournament. Well, exactly, and, and Jim Beheim has had the he's had the luxury of, of resting him if he wanted, but. We know how much Jim Beheim likes to win. Injury can't really get any worse. He talked about maybe saving him in the Big East tournament. I don't think that's going to happen. And obviously, he's playing today. Chris Joseph out there now for Rick Jackson. You'll see probably just seven players for Syracuse, and Jim Beheim considers them all starters. It's the most balanced team in college basketball, and it's got unbelievable chemistry. Shot clock at four. Mara from the corner with Routens challenging, missed the three. Ten three-point attempts for Louisville already. They, they are moving the ball very well versus the zone. The execution of what they want to do has been very good. They're just not making shots. So you can have a great game plan versus the zone, but it does come down to putting the ball in the basket. Here's Routens. And dangerous pass. Play made by Smith. Oh, the other end. He's in the top 10 in Louisville history and career steals. And that was a helium pass that he anticipated. Wes Johnson right back for Syracuse. He's got seven of the nine points for the Orange. Syracuse has already won the Big East regular season championship and secured the number one seed in next week's Big East tournament. Here's Sosa way off the mark from three. He's 0 for 4 from the field. Good example right there. They put the ball to Swapshire right in the mid post. Routens short. And Swapshire lost it. Trish quickly to Johnson. And Trish called for the offensive foul. His first second on Syracuse. Well, Jerry Smith has been part of a team that's won over 100 games at Louisville. And a lot of it through the years has been off the defense. And you see the steal and then the finish at the other end. He's got all of Louisville's points. And he averages just eight on the year. He is fourth all time at Louisville in threes made. Sixth in career three point percentage. All that despite, un despite shooting under 30% this year from behind the arc. Key in this offense now. Keep your eye on Swapshire. There's another contested shot, Dave. That's something that has really been a big reason why Jerry Smith has not shot the ball well this year. But they get another steal. Sosa drives the lane. Great dish. And the dunk by Jennings. And a foul. Sosa. 
Rick Pitino didn't think they could run when they went on the road to the Carrier Dome. They wanted to take the crowd out of the game. Completely different at home. They want to utilize this crowd, and plays like that will get it done. So Louisville with a one-point lead here at home. Somebody other than Jerry Smith finally getting on the board for the Cardinals as Jennings throws it down. Here's one for you. If me and Buster were hanging over a cliff mm -hmm. and you could only save one of us, which one would you save? Easy, you. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, me or your mom? Uh, sorry, mom. <laughs> You're Miller Lite. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> How high's the cliff? Do you love the taste of your beer this much? Well, you could. Try the great Pilsner taste of a triple hop brewed Miller Lite. Taste greatness. If me and Buster are hanging off a cliff, what is she talking about? <laughs> I know. My new computer started out fast. The human hand is capable of amazing things. So if you experience a sports or related injury, turn to Jewish Sports Medicine and the experts at Jewish Hand Care. With world-renowned specialists and the region's only dedicated hand ER, Jewish is your first choice for shoulder, arm, and hand injuries of all kinds. Have you driven a Ford lately? There's never been a better time to purchase a new Ford. And we're offering 0% APR for 60 months on all new 2010 Escapes and Edges. Stop by today or check out our inventory of new and used vehicles online at AllStateTrucks.com. Allstate Ford. We are not just trucks. Big O has the perfect fit for the most popular vehicles, like the Honda Civic, $49, the Ford Ranger, $72, and the Chevy Tahoe, $136. We'll beat any advertised price on these three tires. Go easy. Go Big O. Rick Pitino's Cardinals on top of the number one team in the country by one. And you might be surprised that Pitino's favorite Freedom Hall moment is not as the coach of Louisville. We came in here as just happy since the inception of the Big East. Providence uh, was in dead last place. Now we finally get an NCAA bid and we upset the, the first two teams we play. And now we get a chance to go in and play a great Alabama team and then an arch rival in Georgetown who beat us 25 and 30 to two prior times. And uh, we had two great games where I think we shot about 67% in each game and uh, beat Georgetown by 15 to go to the Final Four. So, so much was at stake in that game as well. And Patino now in his ninth year as the head coach here at Louisville. It's amazing. You know, the, the, the basketball world is so small. He didn't even remember, as you see, Purvis Ellison, the outstanding player from the 86 Final Four, freshman. But he didn't even remember being here when Jim Beheim, when he was a member of that Syracuse staff, Jim Beheim getting his first win over a ranked team. He said, oh, yeah, I was here. I think I was. That, that means he's getting old. <laughs> In fact, to Bernie Fine said that he was out recruiting and there was a storm here in Louisville. He couldn't get a hold of anybody to find out if they won the game. Finally got a hold of a player in the hotel. Louisville leading by one with the basketball. 12 of their 16 attempts from the field have been threes, and many of those have been contested shots. And Rick Pitino, they like to shoot seven or less contested shots during every game. Their ball movement versus the zone has been very, very good. The scheme is good. It's now a question of getting those open shots and knocking some down. Here's Swapshire in the high post. Shot clock down to six. Another contested one, but Delk hit it anyway with Johnson in his grill. In the first game up at the Dome, Jared Swapshire was outstanding in that high post. He and Samuels really understand inside-out play. Anuaku gets fouled from behind by Jennings, his first and the fourth on Louisville. This is a great catch by Swapshire in the middle. Take a look. He looks opposite now. The pass is a little off, and Delk has to make the tough one. Another contested shot. But in terms of the scheme, Dave, you see what Syracuse is trying to do. See the numbers for Delk. Transfer from Mississippi State. So on senior day for him is Anawaku, one of the worst free throw shooters in the country. 44% this year, which has actually improved over previous seasons. I remember being an assistant coach at Providence College when Stevie Thompson, who was an outstanding Syracuse Orangeman, played here. And we actually fouled him in the first half of games 
for that very reason. You saw the air ball by Anawaku. We would foul Stevie Thompson in the first half of games when they were in the bonus because it was like a turnover. Harder to do that with Anawaku because he's a post player and doesn't have the ball in his hands as often. Here's Sosa, got an open look. And he is 0 for 5 from the field, but Knowles with the offensive rebound. Delks 3, not there. Jardine almost tipped it in to the basket. And then Routens on the other end has it for Syracuse. Right now for Syracuse, Dave, just weather the storm of this crowd. Nice move by Jardine, one of the most improved players in the Big East this year. After not playing because of an injury last year and struggling his first year at Syracuse. It's kind of interesting. Orange only down two, but Syracuse, while they haven't played great, they've weathered the storm of the emotion so far. Noel short with the three. Jennings rebound. Stick back is there. Jardine on a throw down. That was a concern. Transition defense. They did such a wonderful job in Syracuse back on Valentine's Day. Meanwhile, Jardine leads the country in assists by a bench player. Onowaku may got a piece of that. Swapshire off the mark. Well, that's a great seal. Maybe a little push off inside. But a terrific look by, by Jardine. Another opportunity in transition. Six points for Onowaku. Syracuse has tied it at 15. Take a look at this now. Good. This is good vision by Jardine. He sees the seal inside. Anawaku works Jennings over the man. He seals him up the lane and a good delivery by Jardine. Tonight, North Carolina and Duke, one of the great rivalries in all of sports. Renewed at Cameron Indoor Stadium. North Carolina's won four straight there. We'll see if they can make it five in a row tonight. Catch College Game Day, driven by State Farm at 8 Eastern to tip things off. Can Carolina win that one? That's going to be really hard. The emotion of playing at home for Duke, losing those four straight. I'll tell you, the flip side, you got Carolina with all those McDonald's All-Americans. Here's a guy, Renzi Anawaku, lightly recruited, played football in high school at Episcopal in Northern Virginia. One of those seven guys you talked about, Dave, seven starters, none of them heavily recruited. I find that just absolutely fascinating. Syracuse was picked sixth. Preseason Big East, they are number one in the country now, playing the final men's basketball game for Louisville here at Freedom Hall. And Syracuse has tied it, and Routens comes up with a steal. He leads the Big East in that category. Jardine for the lead. That play right there epitomizes Syracuse basketball all season long. The length of the zone, the steal by Routens, the delivery by Routens, and then the finish. Syracuse playing for perhaps the number one overall seed in the big dance. Louisville just trying to secure a bid. You would think a win today would do that. That would be two wins over Syracuse and 11 in the Big East. A loss would put them at 10 and 8, losing three of their last four going into the Big East tournament next week. Knowles hits a three, the fourth triple for Louisville here in the half. Very solid ball movement. That time Preston Knowles got a reasonably unobstructed look at the rim. 17 threes attempted already by Louisville. Are you okay with this, Fran, if you're Rick Pitino? Well, they don't, other than Samardo Samuels, they don't have a lot of scoring inside against this Syracuse zone. Remember, they've got some bulk in there. Jackson able to clean it up after a block and finish. They made, they shot 33 threes in the first game, and Samuels really didn't do his damage until the final five minutes of that game. Yeah, had eight points all late in that win at the Dome. Only the second loss for Syracuse, its other was at home against Pitt. Knowles for another three. Contact, no foul called. And Delk able to get to the loose ball. And he lost it out of bounds. Syracuse basketball. Michael Stevens was right there. We talked about Andy Routens being a potential candidate for Big East Player of the Year, and here's a big reason why. Take a look at that. You know what? Even though he's in the zone, he's a candidate for Defensive Player of the Year. Man, you love that hustle. That's what it's about. Last game of the season. You know what 2.30 in the afternoon feels like, right? Sleepy? Groggy? Dying for a nap? 
What do you do? Run for the coffee? Grab a soda? But how long does that last before you're back for more? Try this instead. Take one five-hour energy, then see what the rest of your day feels like. Sure won't feel like 2.30 anymore. Or 3.30. Or 4.30. Five-hour energy. Hours of energy now. No 2.30 feeling later. It's another perfect day out here today. Can I get you anything else? We gotta get back to work. We even saw a kid taking a bath in the water fountain. Whoa, I spoke too soon. This just in. A freak storm is blowing into the area. We're going to be experiencing hurricane-force winds and dense fog, followed by sheets of driving gray. Stay inside, hunker down, grab a beer. This is gonna be a long one. Buffalo Wild Wings, you have to be here. We're receiving reports of hail the size of... Oh, boy. On Blu-ray and DVD March 9th, the brothers are back. Let's do some gratuitous violence. The sequel improves on everything that made the first film great. The Blue Book Saints 2, All Saints Day, on Blue Rain DVD, March 9th. Put your game face on. The CIA has a secret. People are dying. I want to know why. Now they have a problem. I know what you did. You take them out. Time's up. Green Zone, rated R. Come into LensCrafters now and get 50% off lenses, including bifocals, no lines, and prescription sun. And with our 30-day unconditional guarantee, you'll be confident you'll find the right pair for you. Only at LensCrafters. Seven out of ten men prefer Degree fragrances over a leading Old Spice fragrance. Degree Men's Deodorant. Mind-blowing fragrances. Villanova and West Virginia coming down to the final second. Scotty Reynolds sets the ball Reynolds. and Reynolds. gives it to Corey Fisher. It up. And Fisher with a long three nails it to tie the game. West Virginia gets a final shot. Evanks. But it was in overtime when Kevin Jones laid that in off the glass to give West Virginia a lead. All right, John Saunders, and here is the NCAA tournament picture concerning the Big East. In fact, our bracketologist, Joel Lenardi, has all nine of those teams he just saw in as of now, including Louisville. Routens for three. Out there, Joseph able to track down the loose ball. Louisville in the zone now. They'll mix zone and man, and their zone's a little different than Syracuse's. They'll match up out of it, play man to man out of it. Routen skip pass almost intercepted. There's Johnson. And good defense by Jennings, but Joseph got it. Stepped on the baseline, turned it over. Change up defense by Rick Pitino. He's got the fastball, the man to man, which isn't as fast as it usually is, and then he uses the zone quite a bit as the change up. A red out here at Freedom Hall. Everybody wearing red for the final men's basketball game at this venue that Louisville has called home since 1956. Already 18 three-point attempts. Their season high is 38 against Arkansas. They hit 15 in that game. Sosa on the drive. Shot clock at 10. Here's Knowles. And Jennings, nice play by Terrence Jennings to put it in. Terrific job by Preston Knowles, gapping that ball, drawing three defenders, and dropping it off to the baseline. Jardine with the alley-oop to Jackson. What a pass. You know, Dave, we know they have seven starters. They just turned the ball over Louisville. But is there a more underrated starter that they have than Scoop Jardine? Leads the nation in assists by a bench player. But then Louisville comes back with a mental error. We've seen that a lot from the Cardinals. Take a look at this. Is that right on the money? Perfect. Do you remember during the summer when, when Jim Beheim said, Brandon Trish is going to be my starting point guard? Good block by Jennings. It'll stay Syracuse ball. And, and Scoop Jardine, you know, as a, as a third-year sophomore, that couldn't have sat well. But the simple fact is this team plays with no ego. Well, you pointed out how veteran they are with a pair of fifth-year seniors, a fourth-year junior in Wes Johnson, and a third-year sophomore in Jardine. 
And that's partly what's made the zone so good. It's not only longer than it was a year ago. There's a lot of experience in that defense. Rick Jackson, one of the most improved players in college basketball. Made a mistake there. Threw it away. Tomorrow at noon Eastern on ESPN, a Big Ten battle with NCAA tournament implications. Illinois trying to secure a spot. Already beat Wisconsin once. Winning in Madison will take on the Badgers in Champaign tomorrow. I think if Illinois wins, they may actually see Wisconsin next week in the Big Ten tournament. Delka missed three. Louisville now four of 19. 19 out of 26 shots for Louisville have been three-point tries. Syracuse allows about 25 a game, second most in the country. Onowaku there to clean it up and put it in with the left hand. Three points, Syracuse lead. Jackson and Onowaku, they are offensive linemen in this scheme. These two guys down low are very big physical guys. They complement Syracuse's perimeter so well. See, Jennings is not a guy you want to throw it to in the high post, Dave. You'd rather have Swapshire moving through there. So they got Swapshire on the wing. Syracuse, meanwhile, with 20 of its 23 points coming in the paint. And here is Jennings in the high post. Made a good pass there. Yes, he though. did. The Delco finishes with the left hand. He sure did. One hand bounce pass. Swapshire and Samuel is a little more comfortable handling the ball, but he made me eat my words. Good look. Ottawa with a good look, and Routens buries a three. Boy, that's great court recognition. You catch the ball, you look over your inside shoulder, so you can see the 80% of the court from where you are when you have the ball inside. First basket for Andy Routen to his second all-time in threes at Syracuse. Good hands there by Jackson. That zone so long, and Onowaku down court, but it was Jennings who made the play. Boy, Jennings getting a lot more time than Samuels and having a very good first half. Great pass by Sosa. Swapshire with it up. We mentioned that Rick Pitino doesn't mind a little faster pace at home because of the home court, but he can't give up the rim. Onowaku having a field day in the low post. He's got 10 points on five of five shooting. I mean, this is like fo in football, your secondary is breaking down right now. They're getting too deep in transition. No one's covering the rim for, for Louisville. Knowles, another good pass. Jackson again with the hands. And... Jeff Clark initially ruled it Syracuse ball, but then said, no, nope, it was off of Syracuse. So it'll be Louisville basketball. Syracuse, the number one team in the country. Louisville, meanwhile, needing a win, perhaps, to get into the NCAA tournament. Down four at home. It always pays to double check. Get State Farm's free discount double check to make sure you're saving all you can on car insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. The biggest stage creates the biggest drama. This summer, 31 countries will fall and one Crown champion live from South Africa, the 2010 FIFA World Cup on ESPN coming in June. Celebrate the new 1.9 million neurons are lost each minute of a stroke. That's why time saved is brain saved. As the first certified stroke center in Kentucky, our focus is on education, prevention, and the aggressive treatment of stroke. Today we are reversing the effects of stroke for more and more patients throughout the region with more frequent use of IVTPA and with innovative approaches to the removal of clots from the brain. Make the right choice in stroke care. University of Louisville Hospital. Farm Bureau provides insurance coverage for your home. That dress she was wearing? <laughs> Does that hurt? Oh no. For your car. You what she told me about her husband. Oh my gosh. I'm killing. 
And of course, for your life. Kentucky Farm Bureau, big on commitment. Well, coming up on the UPS Halftime Report, Kansas number two, but in a big battle against Missouri. Villanova and West Virginia falling all over themselves into overtime. And a couple of Big East teams, UConn, Notre Dame, still trying to find their way into the tournament. It's all coming up on the UPS Halftime Report. It'll be a great final weekend, John, in the regular season. Throughout college basketball, including tomorrow in the Big Ten at 2 Eastern when Wisconsin takes on Illinois. Do the Illini need that to get in? Do the big dance. I think they do. Yeah, I think they do, and they get a chance to play Wisconsin uh, next week. And they've moved that game to two o'clock to really accommodate what's going to be a crazy atmosphere. The Orange Crush and company will be coming out in full force at one o'clock Central Time in Champaign. Here does Louisville need a win to get into the NCAA tournament? Shot clock at two. Sosa lost it. Nobody back. Numbers. Oh, yep. Three on one. Alley oop. Joseph from Routens. And Syracuse leads by six. If there's one Achilles heel right now for Louisville, it's been they have really, really been poor in transition. Samuels back on the floor for Louisville. He's played only eight minutes so far in this game. And does not have a point. Here's Sosa for three. Got it. Fifth three in 20 tries for Louisville here in the first half. Now, ideally, Dave, when you attack this zone, you'd love to attack it from the paint out. And even a little dribble penetration there by Couric was able to contract the defense and open up the three-point line. The team Buckles was out there for about 30 seconds. Now back to the bench. He actually gave Rick Pitino good minutes up at Syracuse. Jardine hits Man. a three. Boy, has he been good this year. Seven points, four assists so far in this game. You know, Jay Billis made the point, and he said it before, but it fits with this team. Their go-to guy is the guy that's open. They have seven guys averaging between 8 and 16. You can't key on any one player. Here's Samuels looking for his first basket. Instead gets a fistful of Wesley Johnson, slapping it out of bounds. As much as Samardo Samuels has improved, he still struggles with length and bulk inside. And these two guys have bulk. Look at Routens. Great play just to get a hand on it, huh? Just a deflection. Now, look at it does. It melts the shot clock. They're getting into their set with 10 on the top. And Sosa takes a bomb with about eight on the shot clock. But Joseph touched it last, so it stays Louisville ball. And we've seen that from Sosa. Sometimes he makes those. Oftentimes he doesn't, but Rick Pitino says he's really grasped what I've been trying to teach him for four years. Well, the first three years he kept both teams in the game. And this year he's been much more a, a cerebral player. He was a scoring point guard when he played at Rice High School in New York City for Mo Hicks. Ali Rowe has more on Edgar Sosa. Amazing is he is a senior today, but this is the first time ever his mom has been here to Freedom Hall to watch a basketball game in his four years. Maritza works in a bakery in Brooklyn, and she just didn't want to take a day off. She's such a dedicated worker, and Edgar says her work ethics made me who I am, but she's getting to see her son play for the first time here in Freedom Hall. And she recognizes this great hustle there as Carrick knocks it out of bounds. But the Sosa has really been an up and down career at Louisville. Had a terrific freshman year, numbers dip, playing time dip, sophomore and junior seasons. But he's had a terrific senior year, and he's got five assists already in this game. As Johnson misses in the lane, out of bounds off of Jackson. Well, the thing you like about Edgar Sosa, you know, he's from the Dominican Republic, same place that produced Francisco Garcia, the great Louisville Cardinal Felipe Lopez. Is they play with great passion and energy and. Sometimes he's got to channel that passion the right way, and he's done it more as a senior. Here's Jerry Smith, who had the first eight points of the game for Louisville. See how hard it is to get the ball inside to Samuels. There's a good look. Samuels tried to make the cross-court pass and route for the steal. A wow. great look down for Jardine. Makes it an eight-point Syracuse lead. Every time Louisville gets beaten transition, Rick Pitino gets somebody else off the bench because he recognizes the breakdowns. Syracuse has not lost a road game this year. The only unbeaten team in college basketball away from home. 
And the last Big East team to make it through undefeated was UConn in 99. They lost only two games that year, the Huskies did, and won the national title. Will that be Syracuse here in 2010? Shot clock at seven, Swapshire. Sosa with five, hit another three. His second triple. Well, that'll build a little bit of momentum going into halftime. But right now, Syracuse should probably get this last shot. Timeout, Jim Beheim. We'll talk about what to do here with the final possession, perhaps, of the half. Ben Stemmel will be with the stage for press with you about his first game of freedom all against Notre Dame back in 1956. Edgar Soso got five assists and six points on senior day, including that three. His second triple here in the first half. His mom seeing him play for the first time here at Freedom Hall. Proud of her son. Now this is a situation, Dave, if you're Jim Beheim, there's a four-second differential. Oftentimes at the end of a shot clock, you want to give your team room for an offensive rebound. But if I have a five-point lead right now, I tell my team, if we get a layup, we take it. But otherwise, I want to shoot this ball as close to zero on the shot clock as possible so that Louisville doesn't get a chance to get a run out. I'd rather have, I'd rather be up five than three or two at the half. Let's see how they milk this clock now. Shot clock at 10. Jardine to route seven on the timer. Jackson with five. On Owaku, missing, rebound Smith. Three seconds left in the half. Here's Sosa with one, got it away. No good. And Syracuse, the number one team in the country, will take a five-point lead into the locker room in the final men's basketball game here at Freedom Hall. Renze on Owaku, 10 points. His first miss was that last shot of the half as we check in with Holly. Well, Coach, what do you think of all this three-point shooting so far by your team? Well, that's all Syracuse has given us. We throw it inside to Samato, and he's getting overpowered by their bigs. We got to dribble, penetrate a little bit more. But look, the way to beat Syracuse, we got to make these shots. They're all good shots with the exception of one or two. We got to knock them down. Syracuse is not going to give you too much in the interior. How do you fix your transition and low post defense? Well, we got to see the basketball better. They're beating us on the break. They're beating us coming out of our pressure. We're probably going to take our pressure off a little bit and just play a little more flat. Thanks, Coach. Okay. Well, Holly, uh, you hit on it there with a question. 34 shot attempts by Louisville. 24 of those have been three, but they've made just six. Today, Freedom Hall takes its final bow as Louisville plays its last home game at this college basketball institution. It has served as the Cardinals' home court since it opened in 1956 and served the sport as a place where championships were won and heroes were born. Host to six Final Fours and plenty of superstars. Louisville has won 681 games in front of more than 12 million fans and collected two national titles in its time here. Hall of Fame coach Denny Crum came to Freedom Hall a man and left a legend. Freedom Hall will forever be remembered in the honor of the veterans it was named after and the home of Louisville basketball. And the 823rd game for Louisville's men's basketball team and finale here at Freedom Hall. As we welcome you back to ESPN College Basketball presented by Five Hour Energy. Syracuse, the number one shooting team in the country at 52%. That's what they shot in the first half. They lead by five. Dave Pash ran for Shelly Holly Rowe here as well. And, you know, friends, interesting. Syracuse had 24 two-point attempts. Louisville had 24 three-point attempts in that first half. You think we'll see the same thing here in the second half? Well, Louisville has to make some threes because that's what Syracuse gives you. They shut down the inside, and the execution was not good, but the schemes were good for Louisville. Their ball movement was good. It's a matter of now making shots. And Onowaku had a great first half, five out of six from the field. Misses the first shot of the second half. While Preston Knoll starting for Jerry Smith for Louisville, Samardo Samuels stripped. What a play what by Johnson. Play. That, that started from the very beginning when Samuels got the ball, Dave. Samuels uh, did not score in that first half for Louisville. And offensive foul on Syracuse. Let's check in with Holly Rowe for more on why Jerry Smith isn't starting. 
Well, guys, in that first half, Jerry Smith injured his right thumb on his shooting hand. They've taped it up on the bench. Fred Heine, the athletic trainer, has taped it and put ice on it. They're not sure if he'll be able to return in this ball game. Guys, this is critical because his emotion here on senior day was huge. He led the team in scoring with eight points and rebounding with four in the first half. Thank you, Holly, for that report. And uh, those eight points uh, were the first eight points of the game for Louisville. Meanwhile, foul on Jackson on the other end was his second personal. Samuels to the corner. Here's Sosa, his third three of the game. And Louisville back within a deuce. Very patient job by Samardo Samuels. He'll have trouble scoring against that size, but he made a nice look to the weak side corner. Rotten's looking to answer off the mark. Knowles rebound. Here's Dell from the corner. Swapshire there, and a foul on Syracuse. This is a big way to start if you're Louisville. Jerry Smith on the bench. Samuel's not getting it going inside, and a good look to the weak side. And on senior day, Edgar Sosa now with nine points to lead Louisville. The foul was on Wes Johnson, his first. Second on Syracuse, the Orange playing perhaps for the number one overall seed in the NCAA tournament. Louisville trying to secure a bid. The Cardinals win will be 11 and 7 with two wins against Syracuse. They would definitely be in with a loss at 10 and 8. May still have some work to do at the Big East tournament next week. This young man is really starting to improve. Jared Swapshire, Rick Patino compares his development to Villanova's Dante Cunningham over four years. He's just got to put on about 15 more pounds of muscle. Just tied the game at 85. Swap shot. Rounds into the lane. Lost his footing. And Sosa able to throw it off of Anawaka. It was a matchup zone. Routens got in too deep, and it's senior day. So you got to make those hustle plays when you're the underdog. Championship week. The action continues through March 14th on ESPN. Four friends started partying in 2010 and woke up in 1986. <laughs> Is there some kind of retro thing going on? Let's get this party started. Mom? Now, they have one weekend in the 80s. You gotta do exactly what we did 20 years ago. Like you step on a bug and the internet's never invented. Right. Oh, then you have to talk to girls with your mouth. To rewrite their future. There's money to be made here. We should create Girls Gone Wild. That's fantastic. Hot Tub Time Machine. Look what Daddy did. Rated R. March 26th. What can I say? I've got discriminating taste. It's true. I just I never thought that I would find the one, you know, and I mean, I found ones in the past that I liked, but none that I really loved. Until now? Until now. <laughs> awesome. Do you love the taste of your beer this much? We still on for tonight, right? Well, you could. Try the great Pilsner taste of a triple hops brewed Miller Lite. Taste greatness. Man, I wish this game would never end. Hey, send it into overtime. Yeah, no problem. The pass up to Hampton for the win. Oh, he loses control. This one is going into overtime. Buffalo Wild Wings, you have to be here. a pencil to create new worlds. My phone helps me capture the things that inspire me. After all, every superhero needs a power. The Android-powered Samsung Behold 2, with thousands of apps and an LED screen to bring them spectacularly to life. My thing is superhuman. My phone is a Samsung. Louisville with the first five points of the second half has tied the game. Edgar Sosa now with nine points, five assists, and a ton of energy brought by the Cardinal senior guard. Uh, never mind it, coaching a guy that had more, more fire than I did. And that's what Edgar Sosa brings to the table. Take a look at the hustle play and watch his reaction. That's what you love. His mom looking on. 
I mentioned that a Rice High School, which has produced the likes of Russell Robinson, Kemba Walker, Felipe Lopez, and a guy named Dean Memminger a long time ago. Got to get Marquette. This is her first time seeing him play here at Freedom Hall. Final game for Louisville's men's basketball team here at the historic arena. 54 years here. They'll move into a brand-new downtown venue next year. It'll seat 22,000. They've sold out every game here in the Rick Pitino era and a record crowd perhaps when it's all said and done. And they count uh, the attendance to that, uh, today as uh, Samuels cannot get a handle on it. He's really struggled. No points. Two rebounds so far for Louisville. Look at the numbers for the three seniors who get playing time for Louisville. Smith banged up as uh, Holly told you. Showing zone and they're going man out of it, matching up. And Jackson fouled as Knowles, who's out there for the injured Jerry Smith, went for the steal. That's his first. First on Louisville here in the half. It's interesting about Preston Knowles, Dave. He hurt his right thumb back in the December against UNLV, and Rick Patino told us it affects him more defensively than it does offensively. Doesn't like to reach in and look, poke those steals away. Because it really been a psychological barrier for him. Swapshire picked up the foul on the inbound, but not a bad foul because Rick Jackson was going to get an easy basket. And Jackson's only a 51% free throw shooter. Playing a lot of people think Syracuse is the favorite to win the national title. But Jackson, a 51% foul shooter, and Otto Walker, a 44% free throw shooter. Do you think that could cost them? It, it could. It's going to particularly hurt them when they get to the if and when they get to the round of eight. And then the final four where they're going to match up with similar type teams talent wise. We saw that back in 08 when Memphis John Calipari said free throw shooting will not be an Achilles heel for us. Turned out to be in the championship game. One of two for Jackson Syracuse over the last half of the game shooting better than 75 percent of the line. Normally on the year not a great free throw shooting team but again most of that is because of those two guys we mentioned Anuaku and Jackson struggling. And Robbins is one of the best free throw shooters in the country. Foul before the shot, says John Cal. Third team foul and third personal on Jackson. So many different ways to attack Syracuse's zone. Not all of them are going to be effective because you got to make shots. There's a lob play. And Samuels with his first basket of the game, and it's an emphatic one to give Louisville the lead. And then there you see the zone, Dave. And they'll try to match up out of it. Jackson got it, and a foul on Samuels. Take a look at this now. They run a little rob where they screen the middle of the zone, and that allows Samuels to get loose off the lob. But Syracuse comes right back, attacks the middle of that Louisville zone, and Jackson finishes. Second foul on Samardo Samuels and the third on Louisville. Jackson looking to convert the three point play. He's one out of three at the line, but on a walk, we've got the offensive rebound. And now Johnson. And finally cleared by Preston Knowles. So so. Uh, it's a tough to look. Yeah. Remember what we talked about. Up at Syracuse, Syracuse only scored 60 points because Rick Pitino controlled the tempo of the game. And that's what he's telling Edgar Sosa right now. If we're going to run, let's be sure we have numbers. But he, he mentioned to us before the game that running here at Freedom Hall, he actually thought would help them. They've got to be judicious, Dave. Turnover there by Sosa does have six assists. Routens with a quick shot, missing the three. And Siva on the ground, able to save it. Here's Knowles ahead to Delk. And a rare mid range jumper for Louisville. That one rims out. See the quick shot allows Syracuse to get out quickly on the other end. Delk holding his right leg as he comes back down court as Johnson buries the baseline check. That play was set up because of a quick shot by Reggie Delt to miss, and it allowed Syracuse to get out quickly in transition. So a timeout by Louisville with the number one team in the country, Syracuse, leading Louisville by three. The Orange have already won the Big East. 
and they have the number one seed in next week's Big East tournament and the top four teams Syracuse Villanova West Virginia Pittsburgh all get two buys West Virginia big win against Villanova today on the road Marquette Louisville Georgetown uh, will not have to play on Tuesday They've been guaranteed a buy as you look at that list there that we just showed you uh, do you think it's up for grabs or is Syracuse again the odds on favorite to win the Big East Tournament in New York? Well, they're the best team in the league. They've proven that all year, but you know, we know what can happen. I think last year the two teams, the four teams that had double buys, two of them lost. And sometimes the double buy is almost a two-edged sword because you're gonna play a team that comes into your game with you having played one or two games. And even though rest is good, getting used to the environs of Madison Square Garden doesn't hurt either when you've won a game going into that Syracuse game. What about one of the bubble teams? Can a South Florida or, I don't even know if you'd call Marquette a bubble team, or Notre Dame, can they win the whole thing in New York? I, you know, I don't, think, I don't think a team that has to play four games could really get that done. And UConn, some would say maybe they're a dark horse, but they may have to win five games. That's exactly right. Steve, a great pass, and Samuels with a second jam. Dribble penetration opens up the baseline because it brings the center out to stop the ball. Jackson taking it in on the defender and another opportunity for a three-point play as Swapshire picks up the foul. That's his second and the fourth already in Louisville. Syracuse comes right back and answers, but if you're Rick Pitino, you like this little dribble drive play. Watch the center step up, and that frees Samuels on the baseline. Trust, the foundation of championships. But embrace it halfway and expect to falter, because trust is belief. Belief in the team, the system, belief in yourself. Because the next pass, the next shot, the chance to do something special could be yours. The NCAA Winter Championships on ESPN, ESPN2, and ESPNU. You know, I sell tools. Tools are uncomplicated. Nothing complicated about a pair of 10-inch hose clamp pliers. You know what's complicated? Shipping. Shipping's complicated. Not really. With priority mail flat rate boxes from the Postal Service, shipping's easy. If it fits, it ships anywhere in the country for a low flat rate. That's not complicated. No. Come on. But a handshake. Right, right. All right. <laughs> priority mail flat rate boxes. Only from the Postal Service. A simpler way to ship. Score a free night on us after four stays or ten nights at HamptonOffer.com. They uncovered a conspiracy. The CIA doesn't want this to get out. That only he can stop. What do you know? The truth. The director of The Born Ultimatum and Matt Damon. This is it. Deliver their most explosive mission yet. Time's up. Green Zone. Rated R. R. Retirement. A plan to get there. People to help you out along the way. Like chartered retirement planning counselors at TD Ameritrade. They can explain the differences between a Roth IRA and a traditional IRA. If you're doing a rollover, they can help you with the paperwork. Everything to help you choose, consolidate, and put the right plan in place for the big R. It's time for fresh thinking. It's time for TD Ameritrade. A plethora of Louisville legends here at Freedom Hall for the final Men's basketball game by the Cardinals. Denny Crum led the team to two national titles. Daryl Griffith, the 1980 Wooden Award winner. And Dr. Duncan Stein is standing by with Holly Rowe. Well, this man has scored more points than any other man for Louisville. But more importantly, when you were 11 years old, who did you watch play in this building, Daryl Griffith? I came with a friend of mine named Mark Hill, and we came to the game to see uh, Lou Al Center play Rick Mountain in the finals. We didn't realize how important this arena was. We thought we were just going to a regular basketball game. And come to find out it was the finals of the NCAA tournament. We had six of them here. How did that affect you as a young player and make you realize you wanted to play here and be great here? Well, you know, coming up, you always got dreams and want to be a professional basketball player. And it inspired us. Thank you very much. Now, Derek Griffith, one of the great college basketball players of all time, leading Louisville to that championship in 1980. And then Purvis Ellison. Big part of that 86 title team as Samuels takes it in on Onowaku and gets fouled. 
That's the 14 foul already on the Orange first on Anuaku. This is the Freedom Hall All Final Four team. Look at some of the great names that played here. Of course, Lou Alcindor's final game in '69 that Daryl Griffin referenced: 37 points, 20 rebounds. A guy named Elgin Baylor played for Seattle in '58. He wasn't bad. Here's Knowles for three. And Swapshire, great hustle to save it. Eric on the floor for Louisville as well. Samuels a little more assertive offensively here in the second half. Oh, nice shot fake. Here's Siva spotting up. Through the hands of Johnson, it'll stay Louisville ball. Peyton Siva, young man, McDonald's All-American from Franklin High School in Seattle, same school that produced Aaron Brooks. Aaron Brooks wouldn't like that. That ball was yeah. just, that went right through his hands. We've seen two totally unforced errors by Louisville in this game. Siva gave Rick Pitino a great lift last Sunday at, at UConn. Solid play. Syracuse with the ball leading by three. The Orange have already won the Big East and they're seeking to improve their chances of being the number one overall seed in the NCAA tournament. Louisville just trying to get in, assure itself of a bid. Good play by Siva after the miss by Jardine. Transition, Carrick all the way to goal! <laughs> Routon's long three, not there. And a Syracuse foul, fifth team foul already on the Orange. Well, the most famous player from Memorial High School in Evansville is a guy named Don Mattingly. But Curic, I bet he jumps higher than Mattingly. Bob Greasy, also uh, an Evansville native. Wes Johnson picks up the foul, his second. Louisville looking to take the lead. Six minutes gone by here in the second half. Curic, not a great shooter. So right now, you've got to really concentrate on Preston Knowles if you're Syracuse. Samuels facing up on Jackson. Working hard, got it to go off glass. Louisville by one. They trailed by five at the half. Great steal by Kirk. They'll take it in and put it in. Jerry Smith unable to play because of injury, and Kyle Jurek stepping up to help Louisville out to a three-point lead. Well, good hustle. Look at the poke away by Jurek. And take a look at that athleticism right to the rim. Andy Routens lets him go. Jurek has been an energizer in these last couple minutes. You know, Rick Pitino, Dave, he and Ralph Willard call this team, they're a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get from game to game. It's different guys every night when, when Louisville plays well. Here's their tournament resume. Their best win was one of the best wins for anybody in college basketball this year up at the Dome. One of just two teams hit the other to beat Syracuse. They knocked off Connecticut twice. They had a couple bad losses here at home in December, but they had some injuries during that time. Frank. Yes, they did. Three guards were out in the game that they lost to uh, Charlotte. They also got upset by the Catamounts of Western Carolina. Hey, if UConn loses today, that, those two wins may not be top 50 wins. Good point. Louisville foul. Knowles again on the strip going for the steal. That's two on him and five on Louisville. Last I checked, uh, UConn was 48-49 on the RPI, so a loss at South Florida might actually hurt Louisville. Now you see the zone. It's a matchup zone. Here's Jardine, a contested shot, and Jardine still hit it. He's had a great game, 11 points now to lead Syracuse. Maturity, when you look at Scoop Jardine, you think back to his freshman year, the word that comes to mind is maturity. Missed all of last year with a leg injury. 
but he's been one of the best bench players in the country this year. He's also got four assists today. Swapshire hesitated, still hit it anyway, over on a walker. I mentioned, Dave, the scheme that Louisville has is very good, the way they move the ball through the post. Johnson fouled, no basket. They say Carrick bumped him on the ground. That's the 16th foul, first on Carrick. You know, Rick Pitino said he, he's never been a part of a game of this magnitude. Final game at Freedom Hall, number one team in the country. Sure, Louisville's played number one teams before. Beat Pitt here last year, lost to UConn here last year. But this is different with all the legends on hand. Johnson missed once, but not twice. Syracuse back within one. I think it's a testament to Syracuse that Wesley Johnson could be hurt in February, and the team did not really miss a beat. A lot of it is his own lack of ego. Seba says, why not? Another three for Peyton Seba. Don't be surprised by the freshman from Seattle. Shoots over 40% from three. 29 of Louisville's 46 shots have been from behind the arc. They've now hit eight. As Samuels comes up with a good defensive play on Johnson, but Louisville gives it right back. Jardine with a blow by. Finds Hanawaku. Put it in. Boy, did you see him muscle past Siva? That's the difference between a third year sophomore and a skinny freshman. Here's Kirik from outside. Louisville starting to heat up from three point land. He averages three points per game. He's barely played. In this one, he's got seven points. And here come the Cardinals again, leading by five. Samuels got position. Goaltending is called. Got the basket. Seven point lead for Louisville. Well, Kyle Churik has been one of the Energizer Bunnies in here. Of course, on a day like today, you don't have to be energized if you love basketball. But why not? Everybody in this building knows what's on the line. They're stepping up. Every year, you make a resolution, a goal, some lofty thing you aim for that, well, most people never actually accomplish. Last year, Hyundai aimed high, challenging ourselves to become the most fuel-efficient car maker in America. And guess what? According to the EPA, we did it. Becoming the number one lineup in overall gas mileage. Better than Honda, better than Toyota, and better for the whole planet. I'm Anna, leader of the visitors. Thank you again for welcoming us to your world. We have to fight them one step at a time. One of the fall's biggest new series is back. They are everywhere. Their arrival. I need you to be safe. Don't get involved with the visitors. He's the one. We should use him. Was just the beginning. We are of peace. Always. ABC's V. They return Tuesday, March 30th on ABC. Celebrate the New Orleans... You're going to love Louisville Athletic Club's Resolution Solution. For a limited time, you can join the area's premier fitness center with no money down. We have month-to-month -month contracts and are ready to help you meet your fitness needs. Don't wait. Call LAC now and get started on your Resolution Solution. 1.9 million neurons are lost each minute of a stroke. That's why time saved is brain saved. As the first certified stroke center in Kentucky, our focus is on education, prevention, and the aggressive treatment of stroke. Today we are reversing the effects of stroke for more and more patients throughout the region with more frequent use of IVTPA and with innovative approaches to the removal of clots from the brain. Make the right choice in stroke care. University of Louisville Hospital. You're going to love Louisville Athletic Club's Resolution Solution. For a limited time, you can join the area's premier fitness center with no money down. We have month-to-month -month contracts and are ready to help you meet your fitness needs. Don't wait. Call LAC now and get started on your resolution solution. If you haven't seen Dominique Jones of South Florida, you've missed one of the best players in the country, certainly one of the best scores. Watch him drive and just throw this one down against UConn. Worth another look. UConn losing 56-42. to That may cost them the tournament. Notre Dame, similar situation. 
down to Marquette by five right now. Northern Iowa, well, they're helping those bubble teams as they're beating up on Bradley. Kansas game getting a little closer. And Maryland needs some help from North Carolina tonight to win the ACC. And John, if Louisville were to lose here, it would become a bubble team, but a win would certainly get the Cardinals in. They've already beaten Syracuse once. And despite not having one of their seniors, Jerry Smith, since injuring his right hand, has not played. But boy, Siva, Kirk off the bench has stepped up big. Kirk's played just eight minutes, and he's got seven points. Siva and Kirk combined for 18 last Sunday in that win in stores against UConn. Notice too this run has been made with Sosa on the bench and Siva on the floor after Sosa had that turnover trying to hit Delk in transition. Siva was a very highly prized guy. He's a little guy but he's got great basketball acumen. Routens with a floater no. Joseph has it stripped but it will stay Syracuse ball. As a five point lead for the Orange has turned into a seven point deficit in just nine minutes. Part of that is because Louisville's hitting its threes, but also because Louisville's starting to get into the paint now and get points. Something Syracuse just absolutely dominated in the first half. As uh, Joseph uh, has a bloody nose, Brad Pike, the trainer, going to look at it. Now, Rick Patino told us that they would run more at home because of the crowd and the energy, and that's been part of this lift in the second half. Robbins threw it away. He thought Johnson was going to be there. Instead, nobody was. Jerry McNamara was, but he's in a suit. He's, he's not <laughs> as eligible to play anymore. You, yeah, would have been a good guy to throw it to about three or four years ago. Four turnovers in the half by Syracuse. Oval could get the lead to double figures on this possession. Here's Buckles. Siva off the bounce. And Johnson up high for the rebound. Buckles, one of those freshmen who gave Rick Pitino good minutes up at the dome, so he's not going to be intimidated. He's good in that mid post area. Jardine fouled by Siva. That's the 17 foul on Louisville. Coming up tonight, make sure to tune into ESPN. The next installment of one of the great rivalries in sports, North Carolina and Duke, our Saturday primetime game presented by DirecTV. It starts with college game day driven by State Farm from Cameron Indoor at 8 Eastern. Cameron Indoor, of course, one of the great all-time venues of college basketball, as is Freedom Hall. And this is the final men's basketball game for Louisville. We'll still have some trade shows, horse shows. Kentucky will play a game. John Calipari's been quoted as saying he might want to play three games a year here. <laughs> well, that's just John tweaking the Louisville fans. <laughs> John told me a few weeks ago he called Louisville and said, hey, we'll open the new building with you, but uh, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> Here's Knowles for three. Jackson and Onolaco gets the rebound. Jackson did a great job of tipping it away from Jennings. How about the extra passing by Syracuse? A foul on Jennings, but Jardine and Routens, just beautiful teamwork. And free throws coming up for Syracuse. Jackson. You know, actually, in the last 9.49 of this game, is a, it's going to be a nice little test for Syracuse. They have everything wrapped up, seemingly not much to play for. But if you know Jim Beheim like we do, and you know these guys, the way they played all year? Now free throw is going to be big as that's the 18th foul in Louisville. How important do you think getting the number one overall seed is? Or is it not that big of a deal? I, I don't think it's that big of a deal. I think being on that first line with the way the S curve is set up, number one overall seed will play the 64th best team in the field. And getting on the top line is important. Getting on the top two lines almost as important. Do you think Syracuse is a one seed regardless a of lock. how they finish? A lot. Okay. Absolutely. The body of work over the season? Absolutely. This team has such unbelievable chemistry, Dave. Duke playing maybe for a one seed tonight. As uh, that shot was well short, but Samuel's there and he's fouled. At 16 fouls now in Syracuse, they get Wes Johnson for his third. Jackson was in the area and he's got three already. You know the good thing about Samardo Samuels, he came in with a great reputation from St. Benedict's High School in New Jersey. He, is he's going to end up being a three or four year Louisville Cardinal, and that's the plus side 
of a guy that's not necessarily a dominating college player. He's a very good college player. But I don't think he's going to be leaving uh, Rick Pitino's roster anytime soon. That's good. One of many players that uh, Pitino and other coaches here in Louisville, obviously Denny Crom, have gotten from the state of New Jersey. Earl Clark, <laughs> Teflon Dean, the Wagner, Billy Thompson. Yep. How about that Camden connection, right? Yep. Wagner and Thompson. Jardine fouled before the shot. That's the 10 team foul. Uh, correction 19 foul. So one and one here for Jardine. Second foul on Siva. Jardine is a pretty good free throw shooter, around 75%. You think about the loss of guys like Paul Harris and Steven Dorf and Johnny Flynn. How much growth would we have seen from Jardine and Johnson and Routens had those guys stayed? That was the ultimate case of addition by subtraction. Syracuse has missed eight free throws. Louisville has only attempted five. Watch the mid post. They do a real good job of running that offense through the middle of the lane. Here's Siva still out there for Sosa. Shot clock at seven. Siva gets into the lane. Good hands by Onowaku. It's picked up though by Buckles. Here's Knowles. Misses the three as the buzzer sounds and then punched out of play by Kira. And that will bring Sosa off the bench. Now, when you talk about Syracuse, Dave, all year, chemistry, addition by subtraction, the loss of Devendorf and Harris and Flynn, it's a hungry team. None of these guys were recruited, and they really do have seven starters when you look at their numbers. Great block by Buckles on Johnson. Here's Knowles. Buckles in the lane. Kira can open three. Kirk with 10, the lead is 9 for Louisville on number one, Syracuse. Jardine with a three of, on the other end for the Orange. Terrific look. That's a number of times today that Anawaku has caught the ball and looked to the weak side over his inside shoulder. Kirk again. Hit it again. The sophomore averages three points per game. He just tied his career high with 13, and he's done it in less than 13 minutes. You sure that's not Jeff Hall out there? <laughs> From the 86 championship team, who's here today, by the way. Johnson fouled by Knowles, and so Johnson, a very good foul shooter, will go to the line when we come back. Well, Kyle Cure. Moments in college basketball are made on plays like this. Kyle Curick from Evansville, Indiana. Louisville in a desperation situation. Oh, you got to love it. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by 5 Hour Energy. Hours of energy now, no crash later. For more information, visit 5hourenergy.com. You know what 2.30 in the afternoon feels like, right? Sleepy? Groggy? Dying for a nap? What do you do? Run for the coffee? Grab a soda? But how long does that last before you're back for more? Try this instead. Take one five-hour energy, then see what the rest of your day feels like. Sure won't feel like 2.30 anymore. Or 3.30. Or 4.30. Five-hour energy. Hours of energy now. No 2.30 feeling later. A year ago, we introduced Hyundai Assurance to show you we had your back, even if you lost your income. Since then, the dust has started to settle, and some indicators are up, especially for the big guys. But the real question is, how are you doing? Well, the answer to that might not be so clear. So we're continuing Hyundai Assurance and our commitment to you, because the economy hasn't really turned around for any of us until it turns around for all of us. Sticking to a plan matters, especially when it comes to your finances. That's why Chase cards come with Blueprint, free and only for Chase customers. With Finish It, you can take your balance and decide your monthly payment or how many months you want to take to pay it off. The faster you pay it off, the more you'll save. 
and the more progress you'll see every month on your plan. Chase what matters. I have my blueprint. Do you? Start your plan today at chase.com slash blueprint. Kansas Jayhawks trying to close out Missouri. Turnover. Here's Sharon. On Kellis. the break. The miss. The watch Cole Aldrich. Come down the lane and watch it. 15 point lead for Kansas over Missouri. And Dexter Pittman in Texas trying to right the ship here as they face a very tough Baylor team that's coming up at four o'clock and meanwhile over on ESPN 2 beginning at four o'clock the Big South followed by the Atlantic Sun in the Ohio Valley three more tickets punched to the tournament in the field of 65. And you would think if Louisville wins it will punch a ticket to the big dance this is an all-day affair uh, autographs Mervis Ellison, you see Daryl Griffith, Denny Crum, and many of the Louisville legends signing basketballs and pictures prior to today's game. And let's check in now with Holly Rowe. Well, the fans really came out here. They wanted to be a part of this history, and they have set a new Freedom Hall attendance record today, 20,135 to watch the final Louisville game. It is important to note that this building will continue to function. Security yesterday had to lock it down for a period because people were coming in taking stuff. I think they thought the building was going to be demolished and they wanted to get a piece of history, but they will continue to host events, shows, even some basketball games, but the Louisville Cardinal will no longer be the tenant. All right, Holly. Meanwhile, Johnson has both free throws. Syracuse within seven. Oh, what a full court pressure by the Qs. And Sosa calls timeout oh. as the trap by Johnson and Trish King. It's kind of interesting. You know what? Coaching against Jim Beheim through the years. That time they showed the press. They have not played a possession of man-to-man -man all season, Dave. Don't be surprised if they play a little man-to-man. -man. Well, there have been some great moments, obviously, in the 54 years that Louisville's played here at Freedom Hall. Maybe adding another one. Kyle Kirich played less than 13 minutes, and he is perfect from the field. Five for five, three for three from behind the arc. Rick Pitino all year long has looked for different guys to step up, really never getting a consistent effort from any of those bench players. But today, Kyle Kurek stepping up big. He is seven for eight from three-point land in his last three games. You talked about he came up big in the win at Connecticut. Earned a start against Marquette at six points in 21 minutes. Been huge in this game. There's that full court pressure. And Samuels left the handle and he turns it over. Jardine with a steal. Contact, no whistle. Eventually, Trish couldn't put it in. Jackson trying to get the handle. Hot potato. Louisville gets it, and Samuels is fouled. Would that West be Johnson picked up his fourth. That would be the definition of a scrum. Take a look at this hustle. One of those shots goes all the way in and back out. Look at that. But just the effort. You say Syracuse not playing for much? I don't know. Four fouls for Johnson. Looks like Jim Bayham is going to keep him on the floor here with Syracuse down seven. That's the 17 foul, a one and one for Samuels. Earlier this year against Notre Dame, he went 16 of 19 at the free throw line. And route to a career high 36. Double overtime. It's interesting, you know, you watched a lot of Syracuse basketball, Dave, as I have. Every now and then, Jim Beheim will switch out of the zone to a little pressure or man to man. And it's like that change up pitch in baseball. Well, let's see if they do that. One out of two for Samuel. Syracuse ball, the number one team in the country, down eight. They're number one in the regular season for the first time since 1990. Jackson with a miss. Trish can't put it back in, but he'll go to the line. I really like this guy. Just a freshman, Brandon Trish, who suffered a knee injury in high school. Wasn't really heavily recruited. He was one of those guys in the Northeast that was on people's radars. A lot of people assumed he would go to Syracuse, and he did. Syracuse with four players in double figures. 
looking to finish the season 9-0 on the road. Louisville has put up 35 threes, but they've done a better job finding Samuels in the lane in front of a Freedom Hall record crowd in the final game for Louisville here at Freedom Hall. They've got a seven-point lead on the number one team. Jardine knocked it off of Sosa out of bounds at Syracuse ball. Well, Sosa gave the ball a headache right there. He pounded it too much. He went coast to coast and back out, but never really under control. Routon's just three points, by the way, in this game. One out of eight from the field. Wes Johnson, who got off to a great start, going to look quiet since then, but now has 15 points as Syracuse is back within five. Well, they've rattled uh, Louisville temporarily with that press. Carrick again. Got it! Kurek, a career high 16 points. He averages three a game and probably wouldn't play if Jerry Smith were healthy. Well, that's what we've talked about. Rick Pitino all year long will go to his bench, play somebody one game, then not the next. We haven't seen Mike Mara today, who's the hero up at Syracuse. Yeah, he hit four threes in that game. Here's Johnson for the answer. No. Kurek with the rebound. Now if you watch Louisville practice during the year, Kyle Keurig is a really good athlete, Dave, but consistent outside shooting has been missing until recently. Knowles the lob, and Sosa could not handle the pass from Samuels. Louisville turnover, number 13. Now Rick Patino unhappy with the empty possession. You have the lead. What you want to do right now is move the ball, get good looks. Anawaku back on the floor for Syracuse. Joseph to the bench. Number one team in the country's only losses this year were at home to Pittsburgh and Louisville. The last team to go undefeated on the road in the Big East was UConn in 99. They won the national title that year. Here's Routens. As mentioned, just one field goal, so he gives it up. And Anawaku to the basket. Cuts the lead to six. That was great two-man basketball by the two fifth-year seniors. Knoll's done a good job breaking the Syracuse pressure. Struggling right now, though. Got it over to Samuels. I would say the press offense for Louisville right now is called an adventure. Here's Keurig. He'll let it fly. Way off the mark that time. That's Keurig missing. And that's uh, his first one of the game. Anawaku finds Jackson with a high low. Blew the layup, though. Swapshire clear. Dave, he had a big mis mismatch inside on Keurig and couldn't finish it, Jackson. Louisville playing perhaps for its NCAA tournament life. Right now, 10 and 7 in league play. They've lost two out of three. Keurig on the drive. Shot clock at nine. Here's Sosa. Timeout called by Syracuse. Watch a soft miss right here that allows Swapshire to get up and just cradle that ball in. Sosa with a good look. It was deep, but a nice soft touch. And a nice job by the sophomore from St. Louis. Tomorrow at 2 Eastern on ESPN, catch a big one in the Big Ten for Illinois. The Illini already defeated Wisconsin earlier this year in Madison. We'll host the Badgers tomorrow at 2 Eastern. A lot of people talking about Ohio State, maybe, if they should win the Big Ten as a team that would get that fourth number one seed. You have to think Kansas, Kentucky, Syracuse are locked. Right? Well, yep, and you remember Ohio State has seven losses, but three of them without Evan Turner. They look like a two seed to me right now, but not if they blow through the Big Ten uh, tournament, which will start in Indianapolis this coming week. Louisville with two wins. And the Rick Pitino era here at home against number one teams, looking for number three. 
Jardine on the drive. No. Syracuse missing layups here in the second half. Routon's able to hustle. Way off, though. He's really struggled from the field. Just one out of nine. He found him. Jarek. Game high, 18 points for Kyle Turek. Onowaku missed another layup. You get the feeling that Purvis Ellison is back there contesting shots, even though he's in the second row. I'll bet Purvis Ellison never even heard of Kyle Turek. But he has been the story of the second half. Seven of eight from the field. Four of five from three. 18 points. Here's Sosa for three. Spins out. Long rebound to Samuels. They should use some clock here. Swapshire with a face up, Jay. It's good. Uh, never mind. They're getting the bounces. Here at Freedom Hall, their final game here. Jardine, no. Knowles rebound. Numbers. Alley up. Kirk, you got to be kidding me. The great individual second half performances in Freedom Hall history by a guy who doesn't play a lot. I'm going out with him tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle Turek with 20 points all in the second half. Now Rick Catino said he thought he made a, re a recruiting mistake when he signed Kyle Turek a couple years ago from Evansville Memorial High School. He's athletic, Dave. But he hasn't really shown this kind of stroke much of the year. You mentioned he's gotten hot lately, but take a look at the uh, athletic ability. Look at that guy. With all the legends on hand, Kirk adding to the great legacy of this building with just a tremendous half. All 20 of his points coming since intermission. He averages three points per game. Sophomore from Evansville, Indiana. As Louisville is shooting 61% as a team here in the half to just 32% for Syracuse, which shot 52%. They lead the nation in that category in the first half. You know, it's ironic that Louisville controlled the tempo. They played a slow game up in Syracuse, and the Orange only ended up with 60 points. Rick Patino didn't want to run in that game because of the crowd. But you can see in the second half how the crowd has energized this Louisville fast break. Is Syracuse done? Two and a half minutes left, and the number one team in the country down 14. First time they've been number one during the regular year in 20 seasons. Swap time. Slapping it out of play. Keep an eye on this guy the next two seasons. Swapshire is going to be a good one when he fills out, but this guy is the hero today, Kyle Curick. This year, three million new team drivers will be joining you on the road. Better get yourself a safe car. The all-new Tucson from Hyundai. From where I'm skating. From where I'm skating. From where I'm skating. Food should come at the push of a button. So get ready for a seriously tasty burger. With crinkle cut pickles, thick cheese. And did we mention 100% pure beef? It's a big and juicy burger delivered on roller skates from me. Drive in today for a supersonic cheeseburger, and I'll give you a free medium order of tots. It's big. It's juicy. It's Sonic.
George, my team deserves a race. You've only been here a week. <laughs> Not even. What? Giant peanut with sea salt. Dude, you're freaking me out. Hey, getting really sick of this, Gary. Planters with pure sea salt. Today, Freedom Hall takes its final bow as Louisville plays its last home game at this college basketball institution. It has served as the Cardinals' home court since it opened in 1956 and served the sport as a place where championships were won and heroes were born. Host to six Final Fours and plenty of superstars. Louisville has won 681 games in front of more than 12 million fans and collected two national titles in its time here. Hall of Fame coach Denny Crum came to Freedom Hall a man and left a legend. Freedom Hall will forever be remembered in the honor of the veterans it was named after and the home of Louisville basketball. And you could have asked Denny Crum, Rick Pitino, and the other 20,000 here today coming into the building. Hey, who do you think will be the Louisville hero? None of them, not <laughs> one, would have said Kyle Curick. But in 17 minutes, he's got a career-high 20 points. And he, he has helped Louisville open up a 14-point lead on the number one team in the country. That's the great thing about tradition. When you go to a place that loves its basketball, you get to create your own. Joseph three short, rebound Samuels. Well, now if you're Louisville, milk the clock. Use the clock as your friend. Syracuse will trap out of the zone. But we're in for a great two minutes, Dave. They beat Pitt here last year when the Panthers were number one. Syracuse has not lost a road game all year. They're the only undefeated team on the road in the country. And perhaps not for long. Eight seconds to shoot. Sosa, swap shot. Lost it out of bounds. That was actually, if, I, if you're coaching it, you're Rick Pitino, a good possession. Because they used about 30 seconds on the shot clock. And they still lead by 14. A win would give Louisville 20. And 11 in Big East play. And two wins against Syracuse. Johnson rising and hitting a much needed three to get Syracuse within 11. Now here comes that pressure now that Syracuse has brought out of its back pocket. Haven't needed it much this year. Samuels able to break it to Sosa. And good job to get it out to Samuels to take some more time off the clock. Good decision. Very good. Syracuse, you don't want to foul, obviously, with a shot clock at 10. If you're going to, you should have done it earlier. Here's Curick for three. Rebound by Samuels. Couldn't put it back. Swampshire, though, gets it. More time coming off that clock. Under a minute to go in the final Louisville game at Freedom Hall. Jardine on the other end. Syracuse out of timeouts. They'll foul Sosa in the backcourt. Daryl Griffiths here. Purvis Ellison is here. Kyle Curick is here. <laughs> 22 points for a guy that averages three per game. Here's the ovation as Curick leaves for the game. in the second half 22 points a career high played three minutes did not score in the first as Samuels is fouled and that'll put Louisville at the line tomorrow tune in to ABC for an NBA Sunday showcase the rematch of the NBA Finals Lakers and Magic 2.30 Eastern it starts with GMC Sierra NBA countdown at 2 
guy that's enjoying this right now, but he's in El Paso, Texas, getting ready as an assistant coach for UTEP to enjoy what might be a Conference USA championship as a guy that created his own magic here, Milt Wagner. I know he's enjoying Kyle Keurig's performance today. Wagner, a big part of that 1986 championship team that was honored at halftime. The 1980 national title team was honored at halftime. The McRae brothers, Scooter and Rodney, both here. We mentioned Daryl Griffith, Curtis Ellison, Denny Crum, of course. Samuels missing. And Jackson with the rebound. But number one is going to go down. Syracuse ranked number one in the regular season for the first time in two decades. And they're going to lose in Louisville. It'll be their first road loss of the year. They will be the number one seed, though, at the Big East Tournament next week. Remember this, Louisville can breathe a sigh of relief, in my opinion, because I think this just about does it. Louisville's going to be going to the big dance thanks to a second win over Syracuse in the final game for Louisville here at Freedom Hall. They win by 10. status Kyle Kira. 22 second half points as Louisville knocks off number one Syracuse 78-68. Rick Patino said at half they had to make some threes and Kyle Kira just about did it all himself. Kyle standing by with Holly Rowe. Well, Kyle, what went through your mind when Jerry Smith, your senior, got injured and you knew you were going to have to come into this game and have a bigger role? Oh, we just had to keep our head. We had to play as a team like we always planned on doing. And his injury just gave other guys a chance to step up. Preston came in, gave us great minutes, and we played well as a team. You started off with a dunk, a steal with two, and then a three. How did you have so much momentum personally? The last game here is a big game. It was something we needed as a team. The coach put me in to do something, and I don't know, the team just came through. <laughs> It's a great feeling. Not, not a better moment to finish the last game of Freedom Hall and win a, win a big game like this. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Because of Keurig, since late in the first half, Louisville Holly outscored Syracuse 51-33. He almost outscored Syracuse by himself in the second half. Well, Louisville cranked up that fast break because of Sosa and Keurig. Edgar Sosa, the senior, is going to go out a happy man. Holly Rowe is standing by with Coach Patino now. Coach Patino, what were you thinking when you saw what Kyle Keurig was doing out there? When who? I'm sorry? Kyle, when you saw what Kyle was doing out there, what were you thinking? Well, I told him at halftime, look, we're a team that shoots it. If you're afraid to shoot, I'm not going to play. You guys keep on shooting because you're taking good shots. We got out of the press, and that really helped us because Syracuse was doing a great job against it. I know this Kyle is... Keurig was unbelievable. You know, you always look for that special night. He'll remember it the last night in Freedom Hall for the rest of his life. This is such a big moment historically, but more important for your team. How does this set you up for the rest of the season? Well, we're in the tournament now. Not even Joe's bracket busting can bust us out of it now with 11 Big East wins. So now we got to get better, concentrate on the Big East, and improve. But this has been a wonderful night. Syracuse is a great team. They have, a, they have a great chance of winning a national championship. And how do you describe this final moment here in Freedom Hall? You know, I've been so lucky in my life. I got a chance to coach the Knicks, the Celtics, Providence, Kentucky here. And to me, this is one of the most special nights. I've never felt pressure coaching in two championship games. Tonight, I felt a lot of pressure. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. And one of those championship games was against Syracuse when Rick was at Kentucky. Today, he beats Bayheim again with Syracuse as the number one team in the country. And I think, Dave, that Rick Pitino felt the pressure because all of the legends and all the history that was in the building. Kyle Keurig literally shoots the lights out here at Freedom Hall as the Cardinals beat the number one team in the land, Syracuse, 78-68. Stay tuned for Texas and Baylor. Coming up next, for Fran Priscilla, Holly Rowe, and our entire crew, I'm Dave Pass. So long from Freedom Hall, where Louisville 
turns the lights out on Freedom Hall, beating the number one team in the land, 78-68. Now back to John Saunders.